Howdy, this is Doug over at Redshift Poker Forums, and I wanted to answer a request for feedback on the thought process here. So MDW is at the Hard Rock Hollywood. It's a 2-5 game, 600 effective stack. One of the main characters in this is the Spaniard Fish, and he has dropped about 1,500 into the game already, and has been looking up people very light with Ace and King on almost any board. Then there's Villain, who is fairly new to the table, and is a bit of a weak type player. The first issue I have here was your initial plan. You said that if the pro folded, and depending on how many tags entered the pot, you were going to 3-bet or raise almost any two cards. I think this is a terrible plan. You cannot indiscriminately raise any two cards multi-way from the small blind and expect to profit. And what I'm getting a sense of here that we're seeing throughout this hand is you were ready to ram and jam, and I think that's what really ended up happening in here. And raw aggression sometimes does work, and I think that's more or less what happened in this hand. So under the gun pro folded, Villain raised it to 20, and the Spaniard called, and you've got a nice 3-bet light hand, and that's exactly what you do. And I don't really have a problem with this, even out of the small blind making this bet. It's a squeeze bet. Now, the problem is, I think I would have made it a little bit heavier. A pot size raise would have been to 80, and I believe that Villain is going to be much more price sensitive than Spaniard, so by making it a little bit heavier, you're more likely to be isolated with the player that you want to be isolated with. The next issue I have here is, my plan was to fire off a bet on the flop on almost all boards. Okay, you can rep overpair aces on pretty much any board, so I'm not too concerned about that, but do realize you are out of position, multi-way, with one of the players being a calling station. I think I'm going to tend towards value hands at this point. You made your valiant attempt with a 3-bet light. It didn't work as planned, but in and of itself it was probably a reasonably profitable move just as is. But you don't want to get into a situation where you're going to indiscriminately fire out here into a calling station. Then one of the other things that concerned me was that you would check on a flush draw board. The flush draw board is exactly the kind of board that you should be betting and barreling with because you have so much equity with that nut flush draw that you can afford to do that. Now the board that actually came out you have some equity in the form of a gutter ball, but it's not a super great flop. You seem to think it was much better than it was. The next part of the thought process was, after you fired out on this board, you said, if villain just calls, I'm discounting all pairs. Why? I believe that most of his calling range here is going to be pairs. If he's, if he was set mining, which seemed very reasonable there, he could have fives through whatever he's willing to call with. So then when he doesn't hit his set, he still might float you with fives, six, sevens, eights, tens, jacks. So I think he's got a lot of pairs there. Unfortunately, the Spaniard folds, and so you're isolated with the wrong player, and the turn card comes out, and you fire again. So I'm a little concerned because this is not a barreling card. It doesn't really change the complexion of the board, and a lot of the hands that Villain would have called with on the flop are still things that he's going to call with on the turn and you didn't pick up any real equity here. All right, so those are some of the things that I saw in your thought process. I'm glad you won the hand. Sometimes raw aggression will do that, but some of the side notes you made I wanted to feed back on. All right, if you like this kind of thing, come over to the Red Chip Poker Forums 
and subscribe here on YouTube.